So you think you know how to identify snakes, huh? Well, today we are going to put you to the test with the Snake ID Challenge. Today's episode will basically be a game, and you can play this game either by yourself, and you can share your score in the comments below and compare with other players, or you can play this with family or friends to see who's the best at identifying snakes in the group. But the challenge really will be identifying snakes using extremely close-up footage. We would like to thank Audible for sponsoring today's video, and we'll get more into detail about that after the game. To skip the rules of this game, you can just go to this time right here to start. Otherwise, the goal of this game is to get the most points. To earn points, you simply have to identify a snake species using extremely close-up footage of the animal, some of which we'll be using our macro lens with, and some of which it'll just be highly zoomed in. Basically, we will show you a close-up shot of a snake species, and you will have 15 seconds to identify it. Throughout those 15 seconds, we will be giving you clues to help you identify the snake. As soon as you know what it is, shout out the answer, and remember or mark down how many seconds remain in that round. The seconds that are left will indicate how many points that you earn, as long as you are the first person to guess it correctly. If you guess incorrectly, then no points for you, so make sure your first guess is one that you're confident about. There will be seven rounds in this game, and you don't want to just look at the coloration of the snake scales, you want to look at the structure of the scales too. We conveniently just published a video about smooth versus keeled versus granular scales, which if you haven't watched that video yet, it will come in handy in today's game, so I highly recommend watching that first. If you want to play this game with others, then I recommend not continuing with this video right now, that'll just be cheating. Instead, wait, pause this video, and wait until your entire group is with you before you start. Well, are you ready for round one? Let's start. Round one. This snake is native to Africa. It grows to only about two to three feet long. This snake has no teeth, but instead it has bony projections to help it eat its food. It is the African egg-eating snake, and as you can see, she is showing off her defense mechanism, which is to rub her scales together to imitate the saw-scaled viper. It also makes her very difficult to film in macro lens mode, we found out. You may also notice that she is flattening her head a bit too, to really try to look as threatening as possible to us. However, this snake is completely harmless. Doesn't even have teeth. <laughs> Round two. This species of snake is native to Asia. It has heat sensing pits to help it locate its prey, even in the dark. And finally, this species is invading the Everglades in Florida. This one is a Burmese python, specifically an albino Burmese python. Back in 1992, there was Hurricane Andrew that destroyed a reptile breeding facility just north of the Everglades, and that released approximately 200 Burmese pythons into the wild. Now, there is an established population down there, and they are wrecking havoc in the Everglades. They are eating just about any animal in their path. So they are a big issue right now, a big controversy. There are efforts being made to eradicate them, but unfortunately, in Southeast Asia, where they are native, they are a threatened species due to the overhunting of them for their meat. Round three. This species is native to North America. It's actually native to where I live, which is in the Minnesota and Wisconsin area. It's pretty uncommon in captivity, though. It's named after the smell of its musk. It is a western fox snake. These are often mistaken for as bull snakes, but this is in fact a different species altogether. They are named after their musk that smells similar to a fox's den. I don't know what that smells like exactly, and she hasn't musked on me thankfully, but apparently the scents are pretty similar. Ours here is a rescue. She did originally come from the wild, and that's why she has that pretty nasty scar in the middle of her back for anyone who's wondering. Round four. This species is native to South America. They're pretty small. They only grow to around two feet long. Thanks to a unique structure on their face, they are very good diggers. It is a 
tricolor hognose snake. This one was a little challenging because he is in blue, so his colors aren't as vibrant as they normally are. Babies typically hatch out with bright red bands down their body, and as they age, the adults keep some red, and some adults are beautiful still, although others may only retain the black and white coloration, and they lose the red altogether. Unlike other or many other hognose snakes, they do not have keeled scales, so that may have thrown you off. You can tell it's a hognose snake because of its nose being slightly upturned like in typical hognose snake fashion. Round five. This species is native to Central and South America. It doesn't lay eggs, it is a live-bearing species. On average, it grows to around seven to eight feet long. This is the boa constrictor. This is Doug. This is one of only 30% of snake species that actually gives live birth. Around 70% of snakes lay eggs. Boa constrictors are honestly a really good pet snake as long as you have enough room to accommodate them. They're good eaters. They're generally very docile. They get a good size without being like 20 feet long. They're a really great snake, again, as long as you have the space. Doug here is a rescue from our local Herpetological Society, and he has been a part of our programs longer than any other snake that we bring with us. Round six. This species of snake is native to South America. It's known for having pretty large scales, like unusually large scales for the size of its body. And finally, this species imitates a venomous species of snake when it's feeling threatened. This is the false water cobra. This guy is one of my favorite snakes. He's super chill and they imitate the actual water cobra by stretching out the skin along the sides of their neck like so. I can kind of get him to do it here a little bit on camera, but unlike cobras that can only stretch out along their neck area, the false water cobra can kind of flatten out its entire body. Having the word water in their name, you can probably already guess that they live close to the water and they eat a lot of fish and amphibians. That's crazy. So that's on his heart? You can see his heartbeat. Oh, really? That's insane. Yeah, you can totally see his heartbeat. Wow. Round seven. This species is native to North America. It's known for having a bit of an attitude. There are two visual color morphs that you can see here, one of which prevents it from having any black pigmentation on its body. It is a hypoalbino bull snake, otherwise known as a hybinomorph bull snake. So this guy has two visual morphs, albino, which reduces the black pigmentation in his body, and hypo, which increases the yellow coloration that you see. Bull snakes are also known for their keeled scales, so hopefully you notice that too. The hybinomorph is one of the prettiest morphs in my opinion. It's interesting to me how their pattern seems to be diffused, even though both of those morphs are color morphs, not pattern morphs. But when combined, they have very little pattern to them. If nobody answered the correct morph exactly, but you got bull snake, then we'll consider that the right answer in this case. So how well did you do? Comment your score down below and compare it with other players of this game. Before we wrap things up, I would of course like to sincerely thank today's sponsor, which is Audible. Every Thursday, I spend about six to eight hours cleaning and feeding all of my reptiles. To make time go faster, I'm always listening to Audible so that I can get lost in a science fiction story. As you guys probably already know, I am currently listening through the Wings of Fire series. And if you're not familiar with it, it's basically about different species of dragons, each with their own ability or powers. It's kind of like the adaptations different reptiles have in their environments to help them survive. However, some of the abilities are kind of strange, including one type of dragon that has the power to make a horrible smell or stench around it. I call that one the Ed Dragon or the Ed Wing. Thanks. You're welcome. I'm currently on book 11, The Lost Continent, where they introduce a brand new species of dragon altogether, but that's all I'm gonna say because I don't want to give out any spoilers. Recently I've been listening to Audible so I can't hear Ed breaking things in our new facility. What did you do?
If you want to listen to the Wings of Fire series, I'd recommend starting with book one, not book 11 where I'm at. It would make no sense at all if you started at book 11. But you can get book one for free by going to audible.com slash snake discovery or by texting snake discovery to 500 500. There you'll also get two free Audible originals and a 30 day free trial. It doesn't have to be the Wings of Fire audiobook, by the way. It can be any audiobook from their library that you want. You can get it for free using that link, which I'll put in the description below. Audible has the largest a selection of audiobooks on the planet. You can use it to learn a new skill, find a new fitness routine, or to help make chores go faster like what I do with my reptiles. If you don't like the audiobook you chose to download, you can exchange it anytime, no questions asked. And if you need to cancel at any time, you can do so, but you still get to keep any of the audiobooks that you've already downloaded. Again, just go to audible.com slash snake discovery or text snake discovery to 500 500 to get your free audiobook today, regardless of price. Thank Thank you again Audible for sponsoring today's video and thank you to our Patreon supporters as always for all of your amazing contributions to this channel. And thank you to everyone who's just here spending their time with us, learning about reptiles and playing snake ID games with us. Uh, it was kind of just a spontaneous video idea we came up with and I hope you liked it. So thanks again everybody for watching and playing and we'll see you next time.